Right, okay, we're finally ready. So let me hand over to Jay Harrison. Hello, yes, hello me, good, right. Hello, um, I, this is my first ever, so bear with. Uh, I, um, I'm gonna go through, it's kind of a more of an opinion piece rather than a techno thing, this. Um, but um, I've not been in ops long, or DevOps for that matter, um, about two years now. Before that, I was an engineer. Uh, so, I, and this is my first gig kind of on my own. So I'm gonna go through uh, what I've been doing with uh, Rebellion Games in Oxford. So, uh, this is me. Uh, there we go. So, Senior DevOps Engineer at Rebellion Developments in Oxford. Uh, previously with um, Electronic Arts at Playfish in London, again, the operations team there. I must explain the quotes. Senior DevOps, right? I'm senior because I'm the only one there, <laughs> all right? And I'm DevOps because they don't know the difference between that and a sysadmin, so, right. Um, <laughs> so, I've been a sysadmin since about 2012. Uh, I've been uh, building boxes since 1998. I don't look that old, but I trust me, I am. I've been coding since uh, basic on the ZX Spectrum. My dad got me into coding on that. And I've been gaming, woo, I've been gaming since Pong, which is far too long. Uh, this is me, um, that's my stuff. Feel free to hit me up. This is gonna be on at the end as well, so don't bother writing it down now. And, and I'm, this is a uh, GDocs presentation, so I'll give you the link if you want it. Right, uh, so the project I'm involved in. Um, I came into this um, because they had no clue what they're doing basically. I was part of the operations team in uh, Playfish EA who ran their Facebook games. Yay, boo. Uh, I, no, no, I know, I know. I was, I was just a job. I was just following orders. You weren't there, man. Um, <laughs> uh, so we did quite a lot of good things. We ran large AWS stacks at scale, thousands of concurrent users, millions of installs, uh, you know, the regular spiel when you're padding your LinkedIn uh, page out. So I got this gig on the, on the back of that. This was their first um, social game ever. Well, nearly. They did a little one that tanked. So obviously they want some help with this one. So this is their first real um, top tier social game they were going all out on. It was also their first development focused operations engineer in the company, right? They had IT operations, you know, the internal guys doing networking and firewalls and all that kind of stuff. They had no ops, none at all. It's all dev driven. This was not a company that were running their own multiplayer servers. This is kind of old school, you know, they shipped a dedicated server with the box and people ran that if they wanted to kind of thing. I, I, if, do anyone know Rebellion? They do the Sniper Elite stuff, yes? Sniper Elite, they own the Judge Dredd franchise, all that kind of thing. They've got a bit of money after the movie and the merchandising and stuff, so yeah, great. Um, so yeah, I'm first operations engineer in the company, a little bit daunting, especially given that this was my second job in the field ever. Uh, First foray into DevOps methodology, obviously, new to operations, so new to DevOps, although I'll go into a bit of the detail on, on what they were doing with that already. Also, their first major use of AWS services, so all the, all the acronyms, um, and their first use of configuration management, which was all me, because they had no clue. So, and my first, this is my first time without a team. Uh, I'd worked for myself for 10 years, but not in ops. Um, so this was my first time without a backup. Uh, first time building complete application stack from scratch, near enough. Uh, first time being the big dog, yeah. First time making decisions, first time pushing the agenda, right? So, daunting on both sides. Right, so this was my one-man crusade. DevOps, yeah. Right, we all, know, we all know the acronym, don't we? Yes, no? Hang on, let me get through it. There we go, right, so, yeah, the usual, the CALMS methodology. Um, People and process first. Obviously they had that to a certain extent because it was all dev driven. So it was all people, it was all decisions made by the, the teams. Um, automation, not so much. Like I say, they hadn't done this before. They hadn't built a stack where they were storing user data, where they were supplying a game to an end user. They, other than this, they'd shipped games and they'd passed the multiplayer stuff off to PlayStation Network or Xbox or Steam or whatever, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, lean, fast and stable, they had that mostly down, which was quite good. Came in with a, uh, as a sort of a scrum-oriented 
um, process, which was quite nice. Uh, metrics, again, not so much. Quite surprising, but not so much. And sharing, of course, we, we, we like sharing. So the first step was taking the ops out of dev. They had built a stack, uh, hand rolled a stack of application servers, DBs. They had no clue what they were doing. They had some clue what they were doing. They didn't know where they were going with it. They had DynamoDB and MySQL in there. They had, yeah, they had, yeah, I could, yay. Uh, they had um, uh, badly configured load balances. They had no security. They had, I'll go into the nose in a minute, but yeah, not great. Anyway, so take that gently away from them. Yes, I know what I'm doing. You paid me to do it. Might as well give it to me. Um, evangelizing, again, first guy in the company doing this. Might as well make the most of it. Might as well draw them all into the fold of the DevOps. Mm. Uh, get your fingers in a lot of pies. They, had, they were doing a lot of web-based stuff. They just weren't doing it in a DevOps or an ops way, even for that matter. Web development, all their, op, their websites were all monoliths, all single stack stuff. No redundancy. Mm. Um, no security, well, no, not much security. Um, very little DR as well, which was quite scary. Uh, mobile game support, again, the kind of stuff they shipped out, but they were using, they were starting to, to store user data backend for their mobile games as well. Again, not in a spectacular way. And then internal IT operations, make some friends, get a nice computer out of the IT boys. Uh, again, this was all hand rolled stuff. They were doing a lot of internal file storage, all that kind of thing, but there's a lot of, you know, all the automation stuff can be applied pretty much anywhere. You might as well use it for your own stuff as well as, uh, as, well as the games. Uh, again, push the agenda. Not harshly, but you know, make sure the word gets out. And this was the big one. I'm only one guy. <coughs> They'd done it before without me. Why did they need me? So try and soothe the hesitancy to rely on one guy, at least in the initial point. At least to make sure that the stuff got done. At least to make sure that then anyone could take it over. Anyone with a modicum of you know, server config background or whatever could, could take this stuff over. So building accessible tools and automation. Right, building a stack from, stack from scratch. Like, like I say, nearly. They had a stack. It was poor, let's say. All the no's, lots of no's. Two hand configured web servers, not even the same. These were two totally different servers. They just, yeah, let's install this for a change. Uh, no infrastructure security, open to the world. This was in development. This was before they'd even gone live, which was, yeah, OK. Let's just invite the hackers in. Uh, no monitoring, no config management, no DR process, no documentation. Mm, nice. No application logging, no log collection, no scaling strategy, no out of hours support, no database standardization, no, no metrics. Lots and lots of no's. Turn them into yeses. Right. Uh, so, like I say, this was my first gig. Prior to this, we'd done Chef in Playfish. Chef is good. Chef is a great system. Not if you're on your own. I mean, you can use OpsWorks. You can use Hosted Chef. You can use, you know, I'm not a Ruby coder. I did Ruby. I can write Ruby. Not confident in it. So. I needed something that would fit the bill. So quick to get started. Again, starting from scratch, you have to have this up and running. When I started, they wanted to launch a month ago. So the time scale was a bit tight. <laughs> Easy to modify and manage. I was only one guy. I had to be able to pass this knowledge on. Yeah, not everyone's an ops engineer. Not everyone's aware of what a server is, let alone, yeah. Uh, modular and expandable. Social game, you want more people to come into it. You want to be able to cope with more people. You want to be able to grow that stack quickly. Yeah, it has to be able to be expandable. So, da, 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 salt stack. Anyone heard of salt stack? Salt stack, yes, few. Good, okay, yeah, more than a few, good. Okay, anyone working with salt stack? Anyone using salt stack in anger? Yay! <laughs> Hey, they're, they're doing good things. Yes, salt, salt stack in anger, yes? Hey, brilliant. In production? Yeah. Nice one. Okay, how long for? Just out of interest. I'm not bragging, I just want to know. Okay, oh, yeah, that's not bad. Yeah, about the same as me, so that's pretty good. Yeah, cool. Okay. Uh, there, little links. Feel free to have a look. I've got some more um, 
getting started dot links at the end. So uh, I'll give you a little overview for those of you who don't know about SaltStack. Uh, written in Python, everyone knows Python. Everyone hates Python. First, <laughs> most people hate Python. First and foremost, a remote execution system. So this is a package that a system that was built on running multiple at the same command on multiple servers all at the same time. All right, good basis for a config management package. Master minion arrangement, uh, again, multi-master or standalone like Chef Solo, plenty of options. Uh, secure encrypted protocol running over zero MQ, so zero MQ is a nice, you know, stable, uh, mature package. Initially public keys for authentication, again, self-generated, which is quite nice, it manages it all itself. Then faster AES encryption for payload communication, all your commands, all your config management, all that kind of stuff. Fast and scalable, mm, hit some bottlenecks, but yeah, not, not the end of the world. Um, but yes, if you've, got the pack, if you've got the stuff all on the same network, it's great. A little bit flaky otherwise, but anyway. And the nice thing is, you've got targeted execution via all sorts of things. So, there's a few sample commands there. But basically, you've got names, gobs, regex, grains, which I'll come to in a minute, IPs, no groups, etc. all sorts of ways you can target your commands. Okay, so nice Mr. Asterisk there for everything, tell me your uptime. Um, G is the grains flag. OS Ubuntu, tell me what's running Java on Ubuntu. Um, and then regex, globs, all that kind of stuff for your more narrow fields. Grains items, I'll show you that in a minute as well. So, um, nice, simple to get started, easy to manage. You can have it up and running in half a day. It's, it's nice that way. So, uh, and the other thing is, it gives you quite a lot of estate intelligence. These are all as standard. These are your normal features. So this is the grains, that last command there. Uh, Yes, okay, grains.items gives you all of this. Free gratis. Everything that you can pull from a text file on the box. Yeah? Or from a little command, whatever. Lots of nice estate intelligence we can store and use to target. You can also add to that as well, but again, I'll show you that in a minute. Um, so, the config management bit then. This is a salt stack is built on top of the remote execution system. The remote execution system allows you to send these commands out to as many as you want. The, the config management is a la Puppet, Ansible, Chef, whatever. These are your recipes, these are your manifests, these are your playbooks, whatever you want to call them. So they call them states. Again, just another, another word for the same thing. Nicely YAML formatted, so easily readable. Uh, uses the Ginger templating engine for logic and conditionals, uh, for targeting within the states as well. Nice, simple, hierarchical layout. I'll show that in a minute. Um, the top.sls. It's, it's obviously isn't mine. It's a little bit simplistic, but it gives you an idea. Um, this top.sls is like your master recipe. Um, tells you what to install on what. Again, this is just like a single stack kind of thing. But, you know, everything gets core Python SMP. Uh, your Ubuntu stuff gets Nginx and PHP, your log gets log slash, yeah, okay? You get the idea. And then a one-line command runs every uh, state targeted in the top of SLS on every targeted box. Salt star state high state gives you a full run. Uh, this is just a sample Nginx one I pulled off of the, um, the website. But again, it's got everything built in. All the modules are there for your normal config management tasks. Yeah, package installation, services running, uh, and um, watching for package installation before checking a service is running. Making sure your file, your config files are in place. Um, again, the same for, for nginx.conf. And again, these are interdependent, of course. So that checks to see if the service is running. If it detects a change in your nginx.conf, it'll restart the service every time you run the high state or run that state on its own, which is quite nice. Uh, again, another module, which is quite nice if you're working with AWS, is the salt cloud. Again, it's another bolt-on. 
And again, it's another set of config files. And again, there's quite a few moving parts with this, but it's not a big deal. Um, but it does support multiple provide providers. Um, AWS, EC2, DigitalOcean, GoGrid, IBM SCE, Giant, Linode, Rackspace, Softlayer as the commercial ones, and then platforms as well, which is quite nice. So you can provision on pretty much any of these. Now, this is all in development. It's, it's not early days, but it's early days in terms of maturity of the product. Um, they're growing this stuff all the time. So that's what's built in at the moment. And it's quite easy to write your own providers as well. So we have templating then for providers, um, which builds you a box. This is part of my EC2 Live one um, on EC2 um, in location EU West. And you give it the, the master address so it connects back up automatically for you as well. This salt cloud provisioning thing is quite nice because it generates all the um, keys and things for you, connects it up with the master straight off out of the box, which is quite nice. So you've got a, uh, uh, an instant connection to your minion once, you provide, once you've instantiated it with the, with the salt cloud package. And then you've got for your individual instances, templating for those as well. So see there, you're Instance template refers back to your provider template. Specify the image size, et cetera, et cetera. Again, just a sample, but you get the idea. Uh, and again, a one-line command. And you can do this with Xargs. You can specify a number of boxes you want. This just, uh, Salt Cloud, provision me an EC2 Live App box and give it this name. It's a tag, an EC2 tag, yeah? With the Amazon auto scaling, not something I've looked at to be honest. Probably not out of the box. No, because certainly I've had some issues. Not issues. I've had some limitations with this because it doesn't do RDS. It doesn't do ELB config. It doesn't do Elastic Cache. It only does the EC2 on, on Amazon. And this is primarily what it's for is for is for the the, um, the application servers. But if you but we're running RDS. If you're running EC2 instances with MySQL on them, this will do it. No bother. Yeah, this will fire you up a box, this will configure an ISQL, this will stick your config files on there, this will do, yeah? And again, you can set this salt cloud line to run your high state as well. Remember the high state from last time? One line command to, to build the box? So this, one line, will build you one from scratch with everything on it. Um, if you wanted to. Uh, there are some additional components, quite a few. Um, again, your mileage may vary but they're there, available if you want them. Um, Pillar, which is a nice global value store. Does conditionals, does matching, does all sorts in there. You can push your config from that directly based on environment, based on you know, product, whatever you want. Um, I think they're working on encryption for that as well, which is quite nice. SSH keys, you know, your SSL certs, all that kind of stuff. Um, the events, salt events, listens for, publishes, and sends events internally to the master or to a third party. So again, you can push these out to a MySQL box, store your events as a, as a transaction log for your config management package. Um, Reactor is a follow-on to that. So a logic engine to allow events to trigger actions. Um, I've just launched a box. Great, put MySQL on it. Great, tell me it's up. Great, stick it in and just whatever. Um, Syndic, which allows you to syndicate um, masters, multi-masters. So you can have one, one box to rule them all, and the nine boxes of men, and then the hordes of Mordor. Um, <laughs> uh, or you can have the standalone stuff, like I said. It'll run standalone on a box as well. Um, Scheduler, execution of any salt command on masters or minions on a schedule, obviously. Um, uh, I've seen a nice tutorial on this recently, actually, where someone used it for, as a replacement for an NRPE um, to uh, pipe uh, events from salt minions back into uh, an Isinger instance. Tell you uptime and things. I can give you the link if you want. Um, Halite, which is a, for your button clickers, uh, an experimental web UI, early days, yeah. Um, 
Mine is kind of like uh, events, but it's more geared towards storing your um, actual actions. So if you're like high stakes running on a schedule or whatever, it'll, it'll give you the details of what happened when. Um, Vert, which does virtual machine management, SSH, uh, which is an experimental uh, transport replacement for zero MQ. Slower though, so but more secure, obviously. Uh, and Kitchen Salt, which is a provision for Test Kitchen. Anyone using Test Kitchen Chef or? Yeah. yeah okay. So, um, so TDD for that. Using no. <laughs> no. I've only been doing it six months. Give me a break. Um, oh yeah, this is my moderately clever other stuff that I've either done or I'm planning to do. So um, I've got automated Route 53 configuration. Again, using a, an external script, but built into the high state, so it configures based on the um, EC2 tag name, which again, I gave it in the salt cloud provisioning line. Um, automated monitoring, monitoring discovery. Um, deployment configuration. We're not at continuous deployment quite yet. Small team, other priorities, but we're getting there. And we've got the deployment, uh, we're using Jenkins, we've got the deployment script keyed off the state intelligence. Um, from the salt package. So it tells the Jenkins box how many live app servers we've got. Yes, tell me, give me the code for these app servers. Um, assignment of product, service, and environment grains, again, for targeting. You can specify your own grains. So any line of text you want can go into that estate intelligence piece as well that you saw before. Uh, I've got that automated, again, based on those... Um, uh, EC2 name tags that, um, that get put in at the salt cloud provisioning level. Um, live product, service, whatever. Uh, and that goes into the grains as a key to, to uh, apply uh, config management to. Um, I've got, I built a couple of other bits and pieces. So I'm using a package I wrote called CW Graph, which um, basically is a better form of CloudWatch. And um, I've got a nice... Um, I'm quite proud of that. A nice um, log stash setup. Again, all saltified. I can provision as many as I like from a single command. It'll all, it's all self-discovering and all kinds of pretty stuff like that. Right, that's I'm bragging through. Uh, so, salty goodness. Mm. Um, <laughs> it's got a nice, it's got a great community. Um, the CEO of SaltStack comes on the Google Groups thing and goes, hey, it's brilliant. Um, he's, he's good, he's responsive, he's receptive as well, which is quite nice. Uh, it's all, oh yeah, I forgot to mention, it's open, it's open source. Totally free, totally free. Not free as in chef, but free as in beer. Um, uh, the whole of the, not just open core either, everything, you can contribute to it, it's all up on GitHub. Um, and, and, and always will be, asterisk, star, probably. Um, uh, it's, all, it's all open. Anything, any of this is free, free gratis. Um, they charge, obviously, for you know, consulting services and that kind of thing. But to be honest, they're based in Salt Lake City. So you know, unless you fancy a five-hour time difference in your, in your consultancy services, you're probably not going to use them anyway. Um, but no, nice uh, responsive community, IRC, plenty of action on the GitHub issues. Uh, they, they're organizing confs now as well as they're gaining momentum. They do meetups and things. I think they did one in Paris recently. I don't think there's one in London yet. Maybe you should sort it out. Um, it's nice and easy to get started. Dead easy. Like I say, half a day. You can have it running on a stack. Uh, and it's under active development, which is always nice for this kind of stuff. And the badness. Um, the docs aren't great, but then when are they? Uh, Patchy data disorganized, they are working on it, but again, it's sometimes it's a bit hit and miss. But again, you get good answers from the community, so it's not all bad. Uh, it can be complex to configure, no more so than any other config management package, but it's because it's probably less of an organized product than, say, Puppet or Chef or whatever, they've been around a bit longer. It's, it can be tough to... There's an awful lot you can do with the basic stuff, and you get caught up going, oh, it'll be easy to do in the basic stuff, I don't need pillar or I don't need mine or I don't need, you know, so it can be a bit of a, a bit of a, uh, a lazy man's way out. <coughs> um, and it's under active development, which of course means you get bugs, but not too many, quite, <coughs> luckily. So as a final slide, 
I'll show up now. Um, I, I've given you some basic, and again, don't worry about taking these down. I'll make the, the, the oh, that's, that's the presentation link. That's the important one. Take that down if you want it. Um, I'll make it public after this or tomorrow or something. Um, but yeah, there's some, there's some links on there. Um, I, those are just some kind of random tutorials I find quite useful. Um, but the docs are quite good now. Um, like I say, the, the discussion forums are good. Uh, and um, that's quite, the sample state stuff is quite good for, um, for getting started, even if you're just playing with it. Uh, that's me. That's done. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jane. My pleasure. What do you miss from Chef since you moved? I miss, I miss the fact that it, it's more of a hassle to get the provisioning up and running because it's built into Chef, you know, knife, server, create, etc. cetera. Um, I miss the fact that you can't, or that it's more difficult to do that. Although, as it turns out, not as difficult as I thought. It's just, it's a, it's a bolt-on module, so it's one of those things that kind of you might miss if you weren't looking for it. Um, other than that, mostly the maturity, yeah? It's, 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 like I say, it's actively developed, and it's a good package, but it's, it's behind the others. It's not Ansible, it's not CF Engine, it's not Chef, it's not Puppet. You know, it doesn't have a giant conglomeration behind it, as many of these do now, to kind of push the agenda with it. Um, so it's a... Let me get that down. There we go. Yeah, I think that's it. No, no. I don't know. I just, yeah, you do it. <laughs> Is that it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, right, okay. Um, so yeah, I miss I miss the maturity of it. That's 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 the main thing, and I miss not having a team to help me with it as well. You know, but yeah, there we go. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, so I guess Ansible has a bunch of the properties that you installed on Ubuntu. Did you do a comparison? I did. I did. And again, it came down to ease of use. It came down to, to, to the speed of getting started. I had a limited amount of time and me to get it done. So if I'd had two, three guys, I probably would have gone with Chef, or possibly Puppet, or possibly Ansible. I'm, I'm, I'm more familiar with Chef than I am with Salt. I did more work on it. But it, it came down to how quickly could I get this stuff up and running in the end. Could you not have worked with some of the devs? Yes, but again, they had their own priorities. It's a small team. We've got two PHP developers. Uh, we've got two Flash developers and we've got an artist, and that's it. So again, it's not a big company, 200 people, all told, give or take, between two offices. Most of those guys working on either mobile or um, uh, PC console games. So again, not an awful lot of resource in that, in that, in that regard. Me, myself, and I. Anyone else? It talks about making it th things easier for the dev team. Yes. Do, do they actually use some of them? Not yet. They will, when I force them to. Um, yeah, no, the, again, another consideration was the, was the, 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 um, uh, the learning curve, the initial learning curve, you know? With this stuff being, uh, certainly the salt state stuff, being um, YAML formatted, human readable, makes it far easier to understand than it would be maybe uh, figuring out a, a, a chef recipe, yeah? It's, I, I'm not saying that many of the other config pack management packages aren't as easy, certainly in terms of understanding what's going on, but in terms of ramping up to get to the point where you're launching boxes, to be able to do it in, to set it all up and to be able to do it in one line was too much of a, a temptation to, to pass up. Yes? Just to jump on that one, I've got... Um a team of like 90 developers all using Sol in order to bootstrap <coughs> up their own machines using uh, Labrin as a provisioner. So as long as you've got the code in a way they can just simply build their systems, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they're happy using it as a well provisioner. They, yeah. they don't really need to know. If they've got a single line command, if they've got a thing that uses use a salt cloud minus P, you know, dev box, dev dash name. They are single command and 20 minutes later, they've got a bot. Anyway, fair enough, that's slightly oversimplification, but. They use some Vagrant, so if you check out the code that creates the salt, the salt states, uh, use Vagrant in order to bring up the bot, and then Vagrant would run the high state. So if you're one line. Yes, yeah. So again, yeah, just the ease of use is, is, is quite phenomenal with it. Even if you're, even if you're starting this stuff 
from the point of view. I, uh, in fact, I have an ex-colleague who's running Salt alongside Chef, simply because Salt does the multi-execution, the remote execution stuff so well. So he's, they're using Chef, a horribly, horribly convoluted Chef package. Uh, this is with a big media conglomerate naming no names, Sky. Um, but they have a massive, massive Chef infrastructure they use for provisioning all their stuff. They use Salt because it's easy. Mm -hmm. Oh, they do, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wouldn't surprise me in the slightest. But they use Salt because it's easy. They use Salt because they can run this stuff on, you know, with a, a simple pip install, they can have a Salt Master Minion set up running in 10 minutes, yeah? The remote execution stuff is phenomenally easy. Yeah. Given that it's zero MQ, is it enabled to running with Windows? Yes, actually, they, they do. They have a Windows provisioning development branch. Does it work? <laughs> <laughs> yes, asterisk. I, I honestly don't know. I haven't touched it. I don't use, I don't use Windows. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I'm sorry. That's, that's bad. Um, yes, they have. I just as an outside observer, and this is purely anecdotal, I notice more Windows horrible complaints in the, in the, in the groups than I do Linux ones. Yeah, they seem to have more problems with the fundamental stuff with, with Windows, as you almost often do, uh, you know, getting anything external to run with Windows. So, yes, it's working, and I know of people who are using it in... If they can um, through the tears, then... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I keep noticing these, 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 these references to, like... Um, uh, uh, the event manager, event viewer, and 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 win repo and that kind of stuff, and I kind of shy away in horror. You know? But yeah, no, it is. It's being used. It's being actively actively developed as well. So it might well be worth checking out. Um, certainly, simply because there's nothing else. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes. What is the scale for the complexity of the site? My setup is relatively simple. Three environments. Uh, one stack essentially replicated with you know caveats for each environment in terms of access and 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 security. Generally, it works very well, and you can make it as complex as you like. Like it's, it, all those components give you plenty of scope. You know, you've got the targeting, you've got the likes of pillar, which gives you conditional targeting, conditional logic to apply. The the pillar stuff is quite nice because you can then embed that in your conf files. So when you build a, uh, when you run a high state with a conf file, you can have a conf file self-configure based on the pillar data of that environment. If environment equals dev, then nginx equals home slash home slash user, whatever. If environment equals live slash var slash whatever, that kind of stuff. It, it, it's, it, if you want to take the, the level of complexity way up, you can do, and there are people running it on big, big installations, you know, tens of thousands of machines. So yeah, the, the, the complexity level is certainly, the capability for it is certainly there. I'm not using it, but it's certainly there, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna call it there. Yeah, sorry, I've thank you very much, Jeff. Waffle for England. <laughs> <laughs>